Hi, Malik Woods here again with the third and final video in the Prime Telescope Dome series. As you saw last time with lots of blood, sweat and tears, we eventually managed to assemble this huge dome, uh, which you see behind me, now installed. When our initial plans of sourcing a crane from one of the nearby wind farm projects fell through, another week passed during which a 40 ton crane had to be hired from Cape Town. So this video features the eventual dome lift. As you saw in my previous video, where the wind ripped our dome in three, wind is an equally important consideration for the dome lift. The prediction for the next week, Thursday and Friday, looked good. So it was arranged that the crane would travel up to Sutherland on Wednesday, 16th June 2021, and do the dome lift first thing on Thursday morning. Since we still had a few tasks to do to be ready for the dome lift, we came up early and spent Wednesday finishing it all. However, by the end of the day, there was still no sign of the crane. Later that evening, we got a message that they got held up with a job and is expected to get to site at 4 the next morning. All the while, I'd be planning to film the event and that night, charged up all my equipment, checked settings, cleared memory cards, etc. etc. At 3.40 that morning, I heard people arrive at the hostel and at sunrise, verified it would be the crane crew. Over a quick cup of coffee and rusks, we discussed the job and on our way up I took the last picture of the old skyline from the hostel. The low bed transporting the crane was parked down the hill overnight, overlooked by the soon to be capped dome building. The driver skillfully negotiated the sharp corner at the boom, not really built for such an abnormal load, before we all headed to the plateau. The slight embankment of the tar road served as a ramp to offload the crane, which was then driven to the dome with the midwinter sun rising in the northeast. The ground was still very soggy after good rains two days before, into which the heavy crane made quite an impression, but luckily did not get stuck. The crane headed straight for the spot, identified by the driver and his assistant already, to be set up there. It takes a while to establish a crane like this. Watch how the whole suspension first gets dropped before deploying its legs, set up on wooden sleepers, raised and then leveled. After unhooking its hook, it deploys its telescopic beam, which seems like it's able to reach the heavens. One of the requirements for the dome lift, as indicated by the information we passed on from S-Dome to the companies that quoted, was a spreader bar. This helps to stabilize the dome when lifted and relieves the pressure on the straps pushing too hard on the side of the dome. While the riggers were busy, we fixed an issue we had with one of the backstoppers, which we quickly tested before it would soon be unreachably high in the sky. The straps were actually too long when the dome was first rigged and tried out. Although this would have exerted less pressure on the side of the dome, the crane would not be able to reach the top of the dome building. The rigging was therefore shorted, which worked perfectly. When the dome is closed, the heavy shutters are all on the one side, meaning it will be very unbalanced. The top shutter must therefore be left open to balance it. Mains power was still connected to close the dropout and for in case the top shutter needed to be tweaked to balance the dome properly. However, lifting it slightly showed that the balance was perfect, so the electrics could be disconnected. By lifting the dome a little, access was given to fit some forgotten protective plates to the dome ring which is what Abel and Heine are busy doing here. As dome gave the weight of the dome to be approximately 10,500 pounds or nearly 4.8 tons. However, the crane indicated that it only weighed 3.4 tons or 7,500 pounds. I swear we did not leave out that many bits to account for the 1.4 tons shortfall. You may wonder why a 40 ton crane was needed, but enough reach is required because of the more than 60 meters to the apex of the dome from the ground and rigging still needs to be included. 
then finally the moment that everybody has been waiting for for so long arrived. Placing the dome actually went very fast, with the Monet webcam saving a picture every minute, only recording it in three frames. But don't despair, as you may have guessed, I had it covered with a few more camera angles which you may now admire. The dome needed very little rotation to line up with our marks. Also lucky that the part of the dome that first made contact with the dome wall happened to be conveniently for where the platform is on the inside, meaning the first bolts could be inserted without a ladder or scaffolding. The dome was progressively lowered, allowing more and more bolts to be entered, scattered all around the circumference. The crane still kept 1.5 tons of lift until all 40 mounting bolts were finally in.
bolts could now be tightened using an impact gun, which was the noise you heard at the start of this video. A 30 foot ladder was required to reach the almost 10 meter high shackles and to remove the lifting lugs. Once they were all loose, the crane could swing away in azimuth. After clearing the dome, the rigging could be brought down and removed. With the crane's job done, the crew could pack up being all done in less than three hours. We however still had a number of tasks to do before we could go home. To reduce the weight on the dome ring, most of the electrics were removed for the lift. The three so-called towers connecting to the slip rings, the two dome motors, as well as the control box needed to be mounted, connected and everything tested. After installing the rubber seal all around the dome, the gear rack was finally greased. Playing out with some sunset pictures of the completed dome and the view of the new skyline taken when we left site on Friday morning. All in all a very satisfactory moment making up for all the grief the weather played on us.